Let's talk about Levante David. Hey guys, what's going on? James here and welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, we are talking about Levante David and is he underrated? In Bucks fans' eyes, no. In the general NFL's eyes, yeah, kind of. So let's talk about it, okay? Levante David is a one-time Pro Bowler, a one-time first-team All-Pro, a two-time second-team All-Pro, a former second-round pick in 2012, which, by the way, the Bucks traded up to get. I think they gave up a third and a fourth rounder, I believe, which I, those guys didn't end up being anything. And when Levante David was coming into the NFL, he was labeled as undersized. Okay. He's one of the best 4-3 coverage linebackers in the league, if not the best, and I'm sure you could make a fair argument for him being the best. He is fourth in career tackles for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with 765. The only three people above him are Derek Brooks, a Hall of Famer, Rondé Barber, a future Hall of Famer, and future Ring of Honor inductee, just give it enough time, it'll happen, and Hardy Nickerson, which Hardy Nickerson's great. So the point is, is that the three people above uh, Levante David, much like with the video I made about Gerald McCoy, are phenomenal players, and they all had very productive careers with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, obviously Barber being a future Hall of Famer, Brooks being a future Hall of Famer, and honestly, Hardy Dickerson, maybe not a future Hall of Famer, I don't know, we'll see. But the point is, is the three guys above Levante are phenomenal. They're phenomenal, and... You know, he's in good company right now. And give it enough time, I'm sure he'll probably get up to number three. And maybe he'll end up being the most. That's going to be hard to hard to say. Um, I think he'll definitely end up being number two, though, for sure. Um, he's had at least 100 tackles every year he's played, except for 2016. And he's only missed a total of five games in his career. That, to me, is uh, pretty much an Iron Man, in my opinion. That's That's pretty darn good. So, why is Levante David underrated? Well, you know, why doesn't he get uh, put in more Pro Bowls? Why doesn't he get put on more All-Pro teams? If he is, like what you're saying, James, one of the better coverage for three linebackers in the league, why doesn't he get these accolades? That's the key. 4-3 coverage linebacker. It's always the 4-3 linebackers versus the 3-4 linebackers. What looks flashier? What do um, the awards people, you know, whoever makes these awards, whoever votes, what do they care about more? Coverage and pass deflections and stuff like that and just being good at covering a person? Or do they care about sacks? They usually care about sacks, which is why you usually see more like 3-4 linebackers getting voted into Pro Bowls and all Pro Teams and stuff like that. It's because they're the ones who are making the flashier plays. Levante David has very quietly had one of the better careers for not just the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but like I said, a 4-3 coverage linebacker, and that's the key. It's always going to be 3-4 linebackers versus 4-3s, and I think every single time 3-4 linebackers are going to win out because they make sacks, and sacks are more important plays in some people's minds. Yes, this the and honestly, I don't know this, the fix to that problem. Do you divide it? That doesn't seem fair, where it's like, okay, well, we can only have a certain amount of 3-4 linebackers, we can only have a certain amount of 4-3 linebackers. That just seems weird to me. They're all linebackers in the end. They just do very different jobs. And however they want to decide to value that, that's how they're going to value that. They just happen to value three, four linebackers more. It's unfortunate, but that is just the way it is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, maybe maybe there is some type of, um, not, not stipulation, but maybe there is some type of regulation in mind and something along those lines where, yes, there is only a certain amount of 3-4 linebackers that can get voted in for these awards to make sure that the 4-3 linebackers do get voted in, but at least from what I've heard, it's um, that's not the case. But anyway, looking more into stats, okay? Looking more into stats. Like I told you, Levante David is a tackling machine, but he's also very good at pass deflections. So Levante David led the team in pass in pass deflections in 2015 and he was number two for a second um and for another year i believe that was back in either 2014 or 2013 he's also only had two out of his six years where he has not been in the top six for pass deflections keep in mind he's not a cornerback he's not a safety he's a linebacker and to that degree he's a right outside linebacker he's not playing a middle linebacker where he's guarding the middle of the field he's usually 
to the right side of the field you know if you're you know if you're playing on defense he's going to be covering that general area where number one wide receivers would be maybe where tight ends would be and kind of where running backs would sweep out that's where Levante David's going to be and sometimes with slot receivers um can he go into the middle yeah obviously he can play zone in the middle if he needs to and that's how the play dictates but he's kind of on that side of the field he's going to be on the if you're if you're playing on offense he's going to be on your left side if you're on defense obviously he's going to be on your right side so it's pretty that's that's pretty impressive in my opinion to be that high up on pass deflections when you're a right outside linebacker you're not a middle linebacker where you're stationed in the middle and you kind of can go you can move around to eat at either side of the field it's harder when you're a right outside linebacker because you have to go across the field if um the coverage would dictate you, dictate you to do that but i would hope not that'd be uh be pretty ridiculous um but going back to his tackling ability okay now levante david led the team in tackles in 2012. He then proceeded to lead the team in tackles in 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2017. He was fourth on the team in tackles in 2016, which a lot of people marked as maybe the worst year of his career, but it's still Levante David. He's still really, really good. He has 10 career interceptions. I believe one year he had five. I can't remember. He did have five in one year. I can't remember if it was 2015 or not. I think it was either 2014 or 2015. So he's, he's a pretty good coverage linebacker. You know, most most cornerbacks don't get five interceptions. I'm just just saying, and they mostly don't. You know, there's a hand, there's a decent number of cornerbacks who don't even get ten career interceptions before they're out of the league. And a, a right outside linebacker did that. It's pretty good. Um, moving on though to a stuff, his stuffing ability, okay, and how he is able to do in the run game. Now I'm sure, for those of you who don't know what a stuff is, it's a statistic that measures stopping a running play at the line of scrimmage. So if you stop a runner for zero yards or, you know, maybe, I, I don't know if it counts, you know, getting tackled behind the line, but that's, I'm just going to assume that it means just a gain of zero yards. That's what I'm going to assume it means, okay? Going through the numbers for that really shows how valuable Levante David can be in the running game as well. In 2012, he had 19, 19 plays where he stopped the run dead at the line of scrimmage. That's crazy. In 2013, he had 18. In 2014, he had 19. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, mm, that's a lot. Moving forward, though, um, he kind of took a dip in this number in a, in a kind of semi-big way. In 2015, it dropped to 7. In 2016, he kind of bounced back up with 12. And then in 2017, he dropped back down to 8. So, he yes, those numbers did drop considerably his, his first, from his first three years to his next three years, but it still proves that he's a very big force in the running game as well as the passing game. Like I said, he's consistently in the top six in terms of pass deflections. He has 10 career total interceptions, 5 in one season. That's uh, that's pretty good. And he's led the team in tackles every single year besides 2016. A lot of people like to say, like, why didn't Levante David get voted into this Pro Bowl? You know, he, he if, if we're being honest with ourselves, Levante David probably should be at least a three-time Pro Bowler, at least. And the only reason he did get voted in as a Pro Bowler was I believe he was an alternative. He was an alternative to some other, I think it was he, he was an alternative to Sean Lee, which you could argue guys like Sean Lee and guys like Anthony Barr and guys, um, you know, a lot of people make the argument for Anthony Barr's a better 4-3 linebacker, that Sean Lee's a better 4-3 linebacker, um, you know, certain guys like that. And that may be the case. Like I said, you can make a strong argument for these guys. But Levante David, you got to admit, he's top five at least. He's top five at least. And, you know, to be an alternative to, be an alternate to a Pro Bowl, as Bucks fans, you could probably imagine that's pretty insulting. So, you know, if you're asking yourselves, why doesn't he get invited into the Pro Bowl? Why doesn't he get invited in the first team All Pro? Why doesn't, you know, why doesn't he get these awards as much? Um, it's, you know, specifically people look at the Pro Bowls. Yeah, it is what it is. But, you know, it's it's because of the 3 4 4 3 linebacker battle. Um, you know, it's it's always going to be three, four linebackers make the flashier plays, so they should get in the they should get the accolades more, and that's just going to be how it is. But I mean, making an All Pro team four out of your six years, that's pretty good. So we can hang our hats with that for Levante David. Does he not? Does he get into the Pro Bowls? 
No, should he? He should probably have at least three Pro Bowls, but he's been on an all-pro team four years in a row, or not four years in a row, just four years total. That's pretty good for a second-round pick who is labeled as undersized, in my opinion. Also being fourth in career tackles with 765, eventually he'll probably reach number two, maybe number one, who knows. Again, for a guy who is labeled as undersized and, you know, just... Just, yeah, a guy who was labeled as undersized and not very good, you know, that's pretty good in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about Levante David down in the comment section below. Did you agree with my points of him not only being good as a coverage linebacker, but just as a tackling machine? He's a sure tackler and is a run stuffer as well, just based on the numbers I gave you, in my opinion. Not only, we all know about Levante David's coverage ability. We have talked about that before. And, you know, coming into coming into the draft, he, he was talked about as being a very good sure tackler. His big thing was just being undersized. He's led the team in tackles um, every single year except for 2016. He's a very sure tackler. You, you usually don't see Levante David missing a lot of tackles. And we all knew that he was going to be good in the passing game. But for the run game, he's proven his value there as well with his ability to stuff the running play at the line of scrimmage. So yeah, with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about Levante David down in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for any types of videos, again, let me know. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. We are always growing the channel, and I can't thank you guys enough for making this possible. Go follow the YouTube group, like the Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Instagram as usual. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye for now, guys. See ya.